Hey guys, this is John Jay. I just want to give you some notes here regarding Voyager Digital's bankruptcy filing. I believe that was July 5th. So I've had a few people ask me about this and you don't have to be a victim of this, okay? I mean, the best you can do is make a claim on whatever deposit, the dollar value as of July 5th, whatever money you had in terms of dollars, you can make a claim against the assets of Voyager Digital with just a piece of paper, a form, okay? And I'm gonna show you how to do this. So if you were, if you had an account, I don't care if it was a, an LLC account or a personal account, it doesn't matter. If the, whatever the account holder was, whatever name it was, yourself or a company, that is the claimant, okay? The, um, so I'm gonna show you how this works. So what I did is I'm showing you the screen here. So I just went to my search engine that I like and I searched on a proof of claim form, all right? I'm gonna show you that in just a second. But let me flip over here. I'm gonna show you the bankruptcy filing that Voyager filed on July 5th. You can see here, okay? And look where it was filed in the Southern District of New York. Now I did some research. Voyager is a New Jersey company and it was domesticated in the state of New York. And so that's where it's chosen to administer a bankruptcy, a receivership. So receivership just means that a company organization cannot pay its bills and it wants protection from the government. So it files an, an application for protection, okay? This is known as a petition for bankruptcy. And immediately the court automatically grants a stay against all claims and that anyone would make against Voyager and then it controls all the claims. So you can't sue Voyager or you can, but the court can't proceed. You can file a case, but it can't proceed against Voyager. The only way to proceed against Voyager, I guess the better way to say it is, the only way to sue Voyager for your money is to file a proof of claim in the bankruptcy court. So you can look through this listing here and you see that it's a PDF file. You can look, you can search on the internet for this. In fact, I'll put it in the chat uh, thing here so you guys can grab it. Did I do that? Nope. Let me see if I can, all right, there. I don't know if you can see that, but it'll be in the chat window. So what we have here is, the bankruptcy petition, what's really interesting is it's telling you that Voyager is a debtor, it's a corporate debtor. Um, it's telling you that um, wh whatever the nature of its business, it's filing a chapter 11. Um, there has to be a plan. Apparently there's a plan filed with this, but I, I don't see that. I think that there's gonna be a plan and I believe it's due in, uh, in November. Sounds like forever, but the plan is telling the trustee how, uh, Voyager intends to pay its creditors. Now, by filing a proof of claim, all you're doing is putting your claim in queue with other creditors and the trustee is going to prioritize um, every creditor. So some creditors have a higher priority than yours, but the sooner you get your claim in the better. I'm gonna show you how to do this. So then you got, um, you know, it's asking some other details. You can just, it's kind of, you know, technical stuff, who cares? I'm just showing you, okay, look, well, here's what these guys are saying. Voyager Digital LLC has several business structures and these are all included as petitioners in the bankruptcy under chapter 11. But look what it's saying, it's got more than 100,000 creditors. Um, it's got debts, obligations exceeding a billion dollars up to $10 billion. So you got, I guess this is the CEO, right? Co-founder, right? He's the CEO, Stephen Ehrlich, all right. So then you've got all these other things here. There's, there's a law firm that's involved with this and it goes on, okay? You can see here, these are the uh, petitioners. And then we get into you know, all the different aspects of the creditors and so forth. Now, this is a very fresh new filing. So you're well, you're actually very early, okay? You're very early. You have like, oh my gosh, you probably have a few months to file a proof of claim. I would not wait past July. When you see this video, you know, file it as soon as you can. I'm about to tell you how to do this. So I'll let you look this over. I don't want to get in too deep in, into the weeds here with all the technical aspects of this, but just check it out. It's quite interesting. So let's flip over. Here's what I did. I went and I searched on the term bankruptcy proof of claim form. Think of this as like um, a civil lawsuit, okay? So proof of claim is you're making a claim on property for which you're the creditor. So if you deposited funds with Voyager, that makes you a creditor. And so when you file a proof of claim, the trustee decides what priority your claim is against other creditors and claimants. So 
we click on the link here for the actual proof of claim and it takes us to the US bankruptcy court. Now remember, the filing was in the uh, Southern District of the United States Bankruptcy Court, the US District Court, okay? It's the bankruptcy division of the US District Court, the Southern District of New York. So the nice thing about this court system is all the forms are uniform. So we're, for wherever you live is irrelevant. This is being filed in the New York Southern District. You're gonna use this form right here. Hopefully you can see it. I'm probably gonna to have to, uh, yeah, I think you can see this. This is official form 410 called a proof of claim, okay? And here are the instructions, read the instructions. And you would go through and, and list the creditor. So the current creditor is the exact name of the account holder. So if it's you personally, put your name as the creditor. If it's your LLC, put that name, trust, whatever. Um, we don't need other other names here. So yeah, creditor. Other names, the creditor used with the debtor. Okay, so most of you have just one name there. Um, has the claim been acquired from someone else? Chances are it's not. Uh, should there be, uh, where should the notices be sent? This is very important. This is where you get on the radar so that you can receive notices. Now, you are early if you do this claim today. If you do this probably in the next 30 days, it's today's July the 9th. If you do this in the next 30 days, by let's say August 10th, you will not have yet received a notice in the mail more than likely. So do this anyways, and then you will likely get a notice in the mail. And I would do this again, just to make sure, okay? So you put your name, again, the account holder, the address, where you can actually receive notice, put a valid email address, phone number, okay? There is no uniform identifier, more than likely, you don't have that, okay? Does the claim amend one that's already filed? Chances are it does not. You've probably never heard of this before. So no, you don't have another claim. Um, let's see, do you know anyone else who's filed a proof of claim? If I bother, just say no, who cares, right? Do you have any number used to identify the debtor? No, uh, the debtor would go by the name Voyager Digital LLC as far as you're concerned. And you would just check this box, no, anyways, okay? All right. How much is the claim? So that would be the US dollar value because that's all they can deal with, okay? I mean, just give the US dollar value, the best of your estimation, okay? And does it include uh, interest or other charges? Uh, I don't know that I would say that yet. I would just say no, because I don't know that the terms of service include interest on situations like this. So I would just say no, but if it comes out later, then that can be amended. So just click no here to keep your life simple. And then what's the basis of the claim? Um, the creditor is a depositor with the debtor. So John Smith, the, the account holder with Voyager is the creditor to Voyager who is the debtor, okay? Um, and it's not goods sold, it's more like money loaned, but it's not personal injury or anything like that, but it's more of a depositor relationship. So. I don't know that you would say any of these things up here, but what you wanna say is that the creditor is a depositor with the debtor, okay? You can, I believe you can type that out. Let's see here, creditor, yeah, it lets you, okay? Let me just type it up right here. Creditor is a depositor with the debtor. Easy enough, right? Uh, is all the claims secure? Okay, there's no part of your claim that's gonna be secured. It's a completely unsecured claim, so you click no. Um, and then you would pretty much skip everything else here. Uh, well, let's see, uh, nature of the property is going to be, on other you would say, you would say cryptographic currency. Okay. Um, and the basis of, for perfection, let's see, attach redacted copies of documents to show evidence of perfection of a security interest. So because it's not a collateralized deposit, there's no collateral, remember, up here we said no, there's no security, it's not a security. You will have no instrument establishing a security interest. So you do not have a basis for perfection. You don't have a way to perfect a claim because, well, you don't have a way to perfect a collateral interest because the deposit is unsecured. You're an unsecured creditor. So we skip this. Uh, and then, but the value of the property is, you know, what, what it is. I mean, whatever you think it is, your best estimate to the nearest dollar $10, okay? Just do the best you can on that. And then none of the claim is secured. So it'd be the dollar amount that you believe you have tied up. 
that Voyager won't let go. And by the way, Voyager cannot let it go anymore because of the automatic stay order with the US District Court. It's not Voyager's fault anymore. Once it files bankruptcy, uh, the US court is in control and then everything else is governed by claims being made on the property held in trust by the trustee of the bankruptcy court. And that's why you wanna file this proof of claim. So the amount that's secured is $0 and then the amount of the claim that's unsecured is what you just said again. So it's gonna be the same, like if it's $100,000, uh, then here it's also gonna be $100,000, right? And then here it's gonna be zero. The amount necessary to cure any default, I don't know because I don't know the terms. Um, I would just put the full amount that's owed. I mean, if it's a default, I don't know what default is because I don't know the contract, but it doesn't matter. So just put it get 100,000, okay? Dollars. And then the annual interest rate, I don't know. I mean, I would just say, okay, this is gonna come down to a statutory interest rate. So um, I don't know that you would put a number up here. I'm just gonna say zero, all right? There may be an imposed statutory interest rate which the trustee will handle at some later date. So if you put zero here and you, and you check fixed, if later on when it's, when it's resolved and you actually are entitled to get some actual money out of this thing, um, I believe the trustee will uh, calculate an interest rate based on a statute, all right? It, from New York. I don't, I don't know exactly what the numbers are, but I think that's how it works. So you're gonna be fine there. Is the claim based on a lease? No, it's not. Um, is the claim subject to a right or set off of set off? No, it's not. I'm not gonna get into the details on that. Um, it's all a part of the claim entitled to priority. So you check no here. Don't bother reading any of this stuff, okay? Under yes, none of that's gonna apply in this situation. So for box 12, check no. And then none of this applies. So don't even have to enter anything here because none of this applies, okay? Unless you check yes, and it, you don't need to check yes. And then you go ahead and just sign, you're the creditor. If you're signing for an LLC or a trust, sign as the member manager or whatever, uh, as the trustee, whatever the case may be. So you're the creditor, um, put the date of birth. Um, oh, I'm sorry, not date of birth. The date you sign this. So if you do this today, it's July 9th. You would sign it. I believe you could just type out your name here in this case. You could put slash S slash and then type out the name of the authorized signatory and then print your name, same address and name that you gave before about the uh, where to mail notices. And then you're done there, okay? And then I would save it on my computer like this and I would mail it in or I would and or I would email it in or e-file it. I don't know, there's different instructions, okay? That is how you make a claim against Voyager Digital. If you're de you were a depositor and your money's not available anymore, it's actually being held in trust by the US Bankruptcy Court. That's what's happening to your money. Not to say that it's lost, but the trustee will prioritize all the claims in a big list. And you see there's over 100,000 creditors. So you wanna get this in as soon as possible because it's almost like a lien, okay? Um, the priority is dated, okay? Now, and a little bit separate issue, um, I'm going to recommend something here. This is a little bit different. So I'm going to recommend uh, that when you're using credit, you have credit cards, reduce the amount. This is my opinion now. Or reduce the amount to lower your risk of the bank cutting off your credit after you, let's say you pay off your credit card bill, right? For the month. Let's say you just pay it off and maybe it's $5,000 or something, right? And then the bank comes in next month and says, we're gonna lower your credit to 2000. Well, you just gave the bank a bunch of cash that now you don't have ever again, it's gone. They just took it, right? Because they act like they lent it to you. So to mitigate that risk, what I'm gonna suggest is that you reduce the amount of credit you're using on a regular basis as much as you can. Use cash or a debit card, vice versa. Um, and then use credit and the amount of credit you use, make sure you paid off. So let's say you have a $7,000 line of credit and you can reduce it reasonably down to about $1,000 a month, do that. And then keep the 6,000 on the account. And I know some of you will pay interest. Maybe you wanna reduce that a little bit more. I don't know, it depends on your situation, but keep as much debt as reasonably possible on the account in case the bank cuts off your credit. So that way you owe the bank. It's better to owe the bank and have your cash than give your cash and not owe the bank, in my opinion. Okay, so just keep that in mind. That's what I'm doing. Um, I don't know if that really appeals to y'all, but I just want to share that with you. But as far as Voyager claims go, 
Uh, that's what I would recommend doing. Okay. And then just forget about it, you know, move on to something else. You're going to get notices. Don't, don't sweat it. I know it's not, it's not fun to get your money tied up, uh, but you really, it's, it's beyond your uh, power right now. So that's the best you can do. You're not going to be able to sue them and, and try to get into something else that creates some cash flow. Okay. Hope this helps guys. Have a good weekend.